Our next speaker is Georgie Keynes from Keynes Station. Georgie is a sixth generation farmer managing her family's property at Cainton. She works on the property with her husband Toby and her parents. The property runs Merino ewes with a proportion mated to border Leicester rams to turn off first cross ewes. They have a focus on pushing their lambing percentages to get as many lambs on the ground as possible, making sure all of their ewes on the property are performing the best that they can. Georgie is also the executive officer for Barossa Improved Grazing Group, which is a farmer network aiming to improve the land livestock, businesses and people components of local grazing businesses. Georgie and her family are also one of the Red Meat and Wool Program's focus farms. I'd like to welcome Georgie to talk about adoption of um, ag tech on her property. Thanks Georgie. Thanks Jodie and thanks very much for having me here today. Um, yeah, this is our property, Caton Station. As Jodie said, I'm the sixth generation. Um, I farm the business with my husband, Toby. I managed to squeeze him and bring him back into our family business. He's a boiler maker by trade, so um, fantastic for our business. Um, and we run, thanks Jodie, and we run the business with my parents. Um, yeah, we run about 3,000 hectares um, in Cainton, which is the other side of the Barossa Valley on the eastern side. Um, yeah, we basically run 3,000 Merino ewes up here. Um, we um, focus on having as many lambs on the ground as possible, like these guys here. Um, that was last year in one of our um, smaller mobs that, um, yeah, didn't obviously lamb down that many to that ewe, but um, it looked pretty good for the photo. Um, so, our, yeah, our real focus is um, getting as many lambs on the ground as possible. So, um, we want to make sure that we get our ewes running as well as they possibly can and getting the most out of them. Um, we also, so of our 3,000 ewes, we lamb down about 1,000 to Border Leicester um, first cross lambs. Um, we also have a block in the southeast, so the ewe portion goes down there and grows out from September and then gets sold on. Um, and the weather portion, we've just started running through our feed lot. So the first year that we've done that this year and it worked really well. Um, so, yeah, so those border lesters, um, we use them, so we're actually trying to increase that, that um, to about 1,500 over the next couple of years. We see them as a really, <coughs> excuse me, a really good release valve for our business. So, um, if we're getting a tough year, we can get rid of them early and, um, yeah, move them on. Um, and we're looking at keeping our 2,000 um, ewes that are mated to um, merinos as well. We also have some cattle, um, but they are mostly run in our Avenue Range block in the southeast, um, and just the heifers come back up here. So this is the sort of country that we're dealing with. Um, to the western end of the property is the high rainfall area, sort of 500 mil rainfall. We crop, well sorry, we pasture about 150 hectares of that. Um, and then the rest of the property is sort of, we've got a, a, couple of, or a couple of thousand hectares to this, which is sort of um, unarable but um, rolling hills. Um, and that feed base is basically just what's out there. So um, a bit of native, a little bit of um, phalaris, um, and then your barley grass and, and all of that sort of stuff as well. Um, and then another thousand hectares that we've got is this country. Um, which is native hills pasture, so very rocky, very steep, um, sort of half a DSE per hectare out there. Um, so, yeah, we sort of get down 500 mil rainfall here, sort of 400 here, down to about 300 to 250 out here, and obviously with the last few years it's been about half that. Um, so we run a ewe containment lot. This is our ewes in there at the moment. Um, the last couple of years we've run all 3,000 ewes through there um, for sort of three to four months through the summer. So, um, yeah, we really rely on that to make sure that our ewes stay in condition score three so that we can get as many lambs on the ground um, and look after our countryside because it's pretty fragile. So, um, yeah, that, that's a key component of our business but obviously very expensive component of the business for the fodder that we run through there. Um, we shear eight monthly which really stuffs around the system. But if we go for that year, um, then we get too long and we have a real problem with um, staple strength. So we've gone to that eight monthly shearing just to make sure that we can maintain the staple strength. Um, as Jodie said, the other side of um, me is the Barossa Improved Grazing Group. I'm the executive officer. Um, so that's really helped to expand ideas, particularly for the Barossa region. 
Um, but yeah, also get involved with that, with the networking and um, learning about lots of different ideas going on around the region. So one of the first things that we did um, probably eight years ago, um, we took on a RAM stud that we took on from somebody else um, and that really got us into the EID space. Um, we've since gotten out of that RAM stud, it was just way too much work for the amount of effort that we put in um, and we worked out we could actually make more from our commercial side of things. Um, so, but yeah, that, that was how we got into it. We'd certainly been looking at doing it for quite a while. Um, but now we use these little tags here. Um, this one's the EID tag. Um, there is a management tag that goes with that, but we have since stopped using them because, um, yeah, we didn't find that we needed to correlate both numbers and it was just too much information. So we just stick with the straight EID tag. If they lose it, that's just bad luck and we lose their information. But in a commercial st um, side of things, we just don't worry too much about that. That's just a bit of bad luck. Um, we do also, we keep this, this is a red tag view, so she's a mated to a crossbred. We have found that we want to keep using that um, visual tag because you can see if you're using the mob without having to run them through the auto draft. So, um, yeah, we still find that that's really valuable because um, occasionally we'll get, you know, use jump in and out and, and you can just, you can visually see straight away that there's a problem. Um, so we use the EID tags. Um, we do have an auto draft, um, but we basically use it for weights, um, particularly for our feedlot. We run through the crossbred weathers and our merino weathers now. They all go through the feedlots. Um, so we weigh the ewes at, uh, sorry, the lambs at marking and get a, um, oh, sorry, at weaning and we get a um, growth rate for them pretty much through the time that the, the weathers are on the place. Um, and also the ewe lambs, that's also become quite important. So we've been splitting our mobs into fats and skinnies. Um, and then they run out um, across the, um, the improved pastures, but obviously the skinnier ones get the better pastures. Um, so that helps us. Um, and later on down the track, if we're looking to sell something, we'll obviously sell off the bottom ones or the top ones, depending on what the markets are doing. So it just gives us that flexibility to really target what we're doing. And um, we found it really beneficial for the ewe lambs as well, because you've got the younger ones that are um, or younger or um, not putting on as much weight, so you can really push them by looking at their average daily gains and that sort of thing. Um, we also use it for preg scanning. So um, as Nathan was saying, making sure you get rid of those passengers. Um, our ewes are joined for five weeks um, and anything that's dry goes off the place um, then. Um, and anything that doesn't rear a lamb, as we've been trying to, we've bought a little bit more property, so we've been trying to build up our stocking numbers. Um, so we've been keeping them on for a year, but we'll make sure that we've got the information recorded there. So if they come through again, we know that they're twice, haven't reared, so they're off the place as well. Um, and we're also looking at doing um, early and late scan, uh, early and late preg scanning this year. So we've got the use in containment. Um, if we've got them, if we'd, rather than having to separate and have 50 million different mobs, if we've got the information in the EID tag, we'll know the earlies and lates. Um, we'll be able to let the earlies out of containment a little bit earlier, three weeks earlier, um, and that will be our, we'll be able to split them up that way. Um, and so we just do that with, um, we use cousins, Josh just puts the machine on the preg scanning machine and it just all does it really simply. Um, you just have to make sure that you've got tags in everything. So if there's one missing, it stuffs him up a lot. So you've just got to be a bit careful about that. Um, we use it for fleece weighing. We've developed a um, video with Sheep Connect, um, which is up on the web. So um, yeah, you can look at that. But yeah, we use that for splitting up our ewe hoggets. So putting them into either the crossbred mob or the merino mob or the culls. So um, they get put into those respective mobs based on the fleece um, character and the sheep classing. Um, and then on the weight and then the fleece weight. So that all sort of gets put together into a bit of an index that we use to separate them into our hoggets. We don't use that information, the fleece weight, anymore, but we probably should, going further, um, something that I think we need to look at with keeping some older ewes to keep building up our flock numbers. Um, and then status. So, yeah, as I said, if they're um, twins or singles or if they've um, not reared a lamb, um, then we put that all, all in there as well. So we've got quite a bit of information in there. We use true test, um, if, uh, XR and also the panel reader. Um, we, when we had the RAM stud, we had a computer-based program that sat in my laptop 
and then we bought the auto draft and I tried to get them all to speak to each other. I had mobs of sheep in the yards and I couldn't get anything to speak to each other on the phone and it was just horrible. Um, pressure from dad going, come on, we've got to get this happening. So we just canned all of that and just went to the whole shebang with the same company. I think for us that was important. He just one phone call to one person and they um, fix it all up. So we've got the number for um, James Ellis and for True Test in the box in the case um, and anybody can pick up a phone call and call them and it's really, really helpful because quite often it's such a little thing that you just can't work out and they'll just go, oh, you just have to push this button or you know, put this, this input in there and, and it will work. So um, yeah, we've found it to be really beneficial. Um, I've got a little video. This is weighing our weather lambs the other day. So we've got a three-way draft. My husband made the V-race out the back here. It's a little bit short. Um, I think it needs to be a two sheep long rather than the one. But yeah, this is just that um, animal runs in, weigh, uh, picks up the tag and then it's weighing based on, on flicking it out which way the weight goes. So this was just to take off the bottoms from um, our weather lambs that went off on the truck the other day. But yeah, we chose this, um, it's an electronic system, it runs off a little um, 12 volt battery up the top there. Um, we chose it because it's light, I we can move it in and out, and that's probably a problem with our system that we have to move it in and out a lot, um, but I can do it by myself and um, the other thing about the battery is that it's really, really quiet so you've got no air guns going off and all the rest of it. Just have to remember to charge the battery, um, which is a bit of a problem sometimes. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's a one-person job. It used to be a two-person job to, to draft the sheep, um, but I can do it by myself. Um, the sheep get used to it. They run in and out really easily, and yeah, it's actually a very stressless job to do. So um, yeah, we, we really like it. Um, and the next thing that we bought is the combi clamp. So we did this with, um, we joined one of Chris's Livestock Enterprise um, courses and um, got the money for the ag tech rebate and um, purchased a combi clamp. Um, I'll just show it. This is the ewes running through. We was vaccinating and drenching ewes into the feedlot yesterday. So my husband, that's Toby, standing on there. We're weighing them. So we don't have a... Uh, um, a stick reader there at the moment, but we, in the past we have put a stick reader on it with lambs. Um, yeah, so we made sure that we got on with scales on it so we can do both practices at the same time. Um, and yeah, everything else is just in that. We made sure also that we got the, um, uh, the tray that holds everything. We had one in the past in a different business and we didn't get any of that stuff, but um, yeah, it was really important to do it. Um, yeah, so we find it that it's really easy. Um, it does take two people to do it because um, you have to stand on the thing to make it work. So um, you sort of, Toby, if I'm out the back or bringing another mob of sheep up, you have to sort of hop off and race up and follow the sheep up. So it's easier having two people. Um, but yesterday he did do it for a little bit just with the good the dogs sitting at the back there for a bit without me. Um, yeah, we can sort of do, we did about... 500 in two hours yesterday. So, um, yeah, they flick through reasonably quickly. We love using it for weaning. Um, so the ewes and the lambs just come up in one pass um, and that works really well. It takes a little bit longer, but it's not stressful. You don't have lambs getting crushed in the race or anything like that. Um, and we get growth rates on the lambs really easily. So, yeah, that works really, really well. Um, it is a bit bulky and heavy. So, um, it does take us sort of 10 to 15 minutes to put in with the weigh bars and everything. Um, so again, that's a problem, something that we need to look to incorporate everything into our yards when we improve our yards. So yeah, but it is, it is again, a very easy machine to use and there's no technology with it. It's just standing, hopping on, hopping off. So yeah, a really good one. We, we really like it as well. Um, one other thing that we use in terms of ag tech is um, AgriWeb, so a um, computer-based and phone-based um, sort of notebook. Um, and we have had that since Toby and I have been managing the business for the last two or three years, and we really love it. But my dad and, and Toby and I, um, we're all running the farm, so we're all inputting bits and pieces and you get an idea of where everything is. 
Um, I'm hopeless with numbers as well, so it's at the tip of my, on my phone, looking at the livestock numbers, um, paddock, hectares, all the rest of it. Um, this is just a map of our farm. Um, so you've got the, all the paddocks, um, these green bits are sort of the vegetation areas, um, and we've got all our pipelines, so we drive along and map up the pipelines so we know, and then if somebody else comes onto the place, they know. Um, one other thing I found the other day is baits. We've done fox baiting and now everybody knows where the fox baits are. Dad used to do it and we had no idea where anything was and it was a bit scary. So that's a really beneficial thing that we've used. I just took a photo of it and sent it to everybody and just said this is where the fox baits are. Um, yeah, really, really good. Really easy to use once you work out how to use it. Just basically, yeah, flicking things where it needs to go. We also use it for weed management. So a lot of the time if we're riding through the paddock, we'll find we've got silverleaf nightshade in a lot of little spots, just little um, isolated plants. If you're riding through the paddock, you just stop, you map it on right, right where you are, and you, you know that either you can come back and find it or someone else can come back and find it when they're spraying. Um, the other really beneficial thing that I use it for is treatment. So when you're right, filling out your NVD, you've got you can just flick onto the mob, look through and find exactly when you drenched or vaccinated or treated those animals and with the date. So you've got all that information there. And shearing, you can work out exactly when the date was, put it all on there. It's, yeah, very, very easy, um, yeah, tool to use and we've got it everywhere. There are a lot more um, reports and things that you can do in it that I haven't really played with too much yet. Um, but, yeah, I have just started using it for a little bit of pasture management. Um, but, yeah, haven't delved into that too much at the moment. We're still on just a very basic plan. This is basically all we use it for. There's other bits and pieces that you can use it for, but we haven't really found any benefit in that for us as our business. Oh, sorry, one other bit. Um, before I started with AgriWeb, there's also a program called Nature Maps on, um, just on the web. Um, it's an essay-based um, program that you can go in and you can do a lot of measuring if you can find your property. I've also found that really beneficial. Um, so it brings up, yeah, all the different cadastral information and that's really beneficial too. Um, and one other thing in terms of pasture management. So we sow, yeah, 150 hectares of sort of forage um, pastures with um, cereals and ryegrasses and clovers, trying to extend our grazing year. So we have early, mid and late varieties all in one. Um, and I use a plate meter, so I did a pasture principles course and that plate meter has been fantastic. I go out every Monday, do 10 or 15 plonks um, in every one of our pastures and then that helps me set up the rotations for the, you know, a week or two weeks and gives me a good idea about, um, yeah, how much, how many kilos are in there in the pasture. So that's another really beneficial tool as well. It sort of cost about 800 bucks, I think, but... Yeah, the amount that I use it. And just so that you know definitely what, how many kilos you've got in front of you rather than just guessing. I'm not very good at guessing. Um, so one other thing we've got is just this, um, we're looking at using the SIBO Labs, um, which is a um, remote sensing um, to tell you how many kilos of pasta you've got. So we're doing that through BIG, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes rather than having to plonk it, go out there and plonk it. Uh, two other things that we use in our business, Zero and Figured, fantastic budgeting and financial tools. Um, I wouldn't be able to run our business without it and it was kind of a handover of Dad handing over to me and I just um, yeah, took it and ran with it. It was a really easy handover um, and I use it for tracking livestock and um, yeah, really once, once you get your head around it, it probably takes three months of really using it flat out to get your head around it but now that I've got my head around it, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And these are just a couple of ideas that we really want to get involved with in the future. Water monitoring, big water problems out our way with um, all of our dams drying up um, and big reticulation systems. So getting some flow meters and water monitoring information would be really beneficial. Um, flock profiling for our sheep flock. We're about to start buying rams again. So being able to benchmark where we're at and improving that. Sheep yards, shearing shed, all on the wish list, obviously. We're running sort of 50-year-old yards and 100, 200-year-old shearing shed at the moment. Uh, virtual fencing will be a game changer for our business when that all comes in for sheep. Um, yeah, it'll be fantastic. I cannot wait for that to happen. We'll be able to just, yeah, monitor our grazing, particularly throughout our hills. Um, and walkover weighing. So my husband wants all the information from the weathers all the time, but when you bring them into the yards, that obviously 
um, yeah, takes a couple of kilos off each time. So that would be really beneficial. Thank you. <laughs>